Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be working on a track that's been viewed quite a lot on my channel, which is the 1971 Bowlands 1054 that is painted in blue by a previous owner. Now, we already have this on the work uh, on the workbench, and this was a working tractor, and we intended, when we did our first virtual tractor show video, to drive this round to the lineup because when we parked it, it was still running. However, this is where the first problem starts. When we went to turn the fuel on, we noticed that the fuel line here isn't actually connected to the fuel tap, so it's come off. So if we actually turned that and turned the fuel on, fuel would have gone all down the side of the engine, emptied the tank, and it would have been rather expensive. And also, just looking around it before we started uh, recording, we spotted some other problems, such as the starter generator belt being extremely loose, and the engine oil, which we thought we'd changed before, but by the look and smell of it, we haven't, so we need to change that over. It will be doing all of those today in the hope that at the end of the day we will have another working tractor to use. Right, so we've decided that we're putting a new fuel hose on. We've already got it on the tap and it's being held on there by Jubilee Clip. Uh, it loops behind this bracket, which we thought it would be too difficult to loop it through and then put it on the tap. So what we ended up doing was taking the fuel tank off putting it on here and then looping the other end uh, through that hole. From the factory it would have been fed behind the flywheel in the gap there but we aren't going to do that because we don't know what it's hitting from our position and we'd need to take all of the engine casing off to see it and um, we don't know what it's hitting if it's wearing down and if it wears it down too much it go could go through the hose then there could be a fuel leak and we wouldn't know uh, what it is or where it's coming from. So then what we're going to do is we're going to follow the old fuel line around the front of the engine and we will probably utilise a modification from a previous owner which is this uh, spring here which is holding the fuel line up from touching the fuel tank which this is probably so old that you could take it off and it'll stay in that shape but we'll try and use that for the new one and then we need to loop it around here and then onto the carburetor in a very difficult to get to or see place so we will probably put this end on off camera we've got the new fuel pipe on now which as i said there aren't any video there isn't any video of it uh, because this is in a very difficult to get to location. However, I'm glad we did change this, change out this old fuel pipe because I can try and bend that, but it will go back to its original shape roughly. Anyway, now to move on to the next job, which is going to be draining the engine oil, which we have this uh, like adapter thing, because normally if you just undo that and had a tub down on the bench there then the oil would come out of here go onto the chassis which there's a hole in the chassis there which then that fills up with oil goes down onto the steering rod here so that gets covered in oil and then it goes into the tub and becomes a bit more unpredictable whereas this goes under here and then once we've taken that out it will go into this bit and then flow down here and this is a uh, a cut up bit of an old shampoo bottle which may or may not have been my sister's at one point but it's now my ours to use for this so i shall now undo this there we go As you can see, our adapter working perfectly. Right, we've wedged the um, shampoo bottle under the engine and the oil is still draining. But while we're waiting for that, we thought we'd make use of time and adjust the belt 
start a generator belt here. Now to do this you need to uh, use the slot here and uh, pivot the starter generator on these two bolts which we've loosened a tiny bit to help with that. And now I'm just going to loosen this quickly so that I can move this. And if you remember how much wiggle there was, I'm just going to use a pry bar down there to help hold it. And then I'm going to roll this tension on, I'm going to test the belt, which I think that is an acceptable amount of uh, wiggle to be in there. So whilst I've got some tension on it, I'm going to do the bolts back up. Right, now if we test the tightness on this, it's a lot tighter. Right, so we've filled it up with oil now after draining it and we've greased up all around the tractor. Just notice when I close the bonnet here, you can see in the paint the, old, the remnants of the Howard Bolens sticker on there, which I knew I could see the Bolens before, B-O-L-E-N-S, but I didn't see the Howard bit where there's an H there, O, W, and continue. But to me, that looks like a different A than all of our other Howard stickers, so it'd be interesting to see what that sticker looked like before. Anyway, that's uh, going off in a different direction. Let's get it off the stand and see if it'll start. Right, so we're ready to start it now. This hasn't been started in quite a while and it's wishful thinking us recording it our first try trying to start it, but let's just hope it starts. Well, it started up quite quickly, but after that it didn't seem to run uh, too good. We did do some tuning uh, on it whilst we were going around, but I think the carburetor still needs some work. It's good to have the Blue 1054 working again in our working fleet, and I look forward to using it. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video and see our other videos. More to follow as we do more on this tractor. Bye.